Hey everybody, I've got such a fun video for you today because this is the Ford Bronco Everglades. And I am out here not in the Everglades, but in beautiful Northern Michigan. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you why the Everglades version of the Bronco truly is the ultimate enthusiast version. Not the Raptor, but the Everglades. This thing is super, super cool. When it comes to the Ford Bronco lineup, you've got your standard models like the Big Ben, like the Black Diamond, like the Outer Banks, and then you've got the crazy special versions like the Ford Bronco Raptor, which is 10 inches wider and designed to go flying over deserts at 80 miles an hour. But the Everglades is one of those special versions that flies a little bit underneath the radar. This is kind of the off-roader's choice, the enthusiast's choice. It's got really cool options to help you go long distances over extreme terrain um, and even self-recover. Now starting in the front, one of the most distinguishable features of the Everglades over just about any other vehicle on the market is the factory mounted winch. And this is very, very unusual. It's kind of tricky in 2022 to find a vehicle that comes equipped with this option. You've got vehicles like the Power Wagon, which obviously has the factory mounted winch, um, and the Everglades does as well. And it really is a pretty serious piece of kit. This is a worn winch, which in my opinion is the best in the industry, but it's not just any worn winch. It actually uses a synthetic line. It's a Xeon 10S, which is a super premium winch. Now the way they've integrated it into the front is not really my favorite design in the whole world because it kind of, it kind of bolts to the front rather than bolts in the front, if that makes sense. It does stick a good, I don't know, seven, eight inches uh, beyond the front bumper, but having this option really does mean that you can go explore some big, bad places in the Everglades and not really worry about having to go equip your vehicle with a winch after, uh, after the fact, which I think is really, really cool. So I just spoke to some of the engineers and they told me some interesting things about this winch mount and winch design. Now it's a worn Xeon 10S. 10 means that it is a 10,000 pound rated winch. S means it's synthetic, but it's actually different than a Xeon 10S you can buy from worn off the shelf. So they've actually uh, changed around the powder coating on the winch to make it a little bit more durable for a long-term corrosion to meet the Ford standards. And they also changed some of the mounting hardware as well. It's got a different fair lead and a different hook. But what I think is really interesting is because this is a winch design that is mounted from the factory, they had to recertify this vehicle for crash test safety worthiness, which is a crazy expensive project. Now, probably the next most distinguishable feature between an Everglades and just about any other Bronco, the snorkel. This is very, very cool. And once again, it's very rare to find a factory equipped vehicle with a snorkel. The idea being you're letting your engine suck fresh air up high instead of down low, go through uh, big swaths of wet patches right through deep mud. You're gonna make sure that engine is sucking in nice, clean, dry air instead of water, which typically lends to bad news. Now, a lot of snorkels do look kind of tacked on. This one, very well integrated. They had to do a pretty crazy bend. Now it enters the vehicle up here on the right front fender, and then it kind of bends its way around the mirror before creating this little low profile look around the A-pillar. You can actually move this from the front to the back, depending on where you want the air to be sucked in from. So if you want more of like a ram air effect, you can put it in the front and then put this blocking panel there in the back. Of course, we're going through mud to avoid splashback. You want this uh, definitely pointed forward, but kind of a cool feature there. All right, so we're gonna pop this open here and check out what this puppy has to offer. So as you can see, it is one continuous connection between the air box up front there and then the snorkel. It's got this nice little seal, keeps everything super tidy. While we have the hood pop, let's talk about the engine that propels the Bronco Everglades. Now in the Bronco lineup, there are really two primary engines. There's a 2.3 liter four cylinder turbo and a 2.7 liter twin turbo V6. And then if you jump up to the Raptor, there's a three liter twin turbo V6. And for the Everglades, you'd think, oh, it's probably got the three liter. No. Ah, oh, then it's definitely got the 2.7. No. The Everglades actually comes equipped with the 2.3, the smallest engine, the four cylinder turbo. And I would argue that this is the right engine for this application. Now, horsepower and torque, 300 horsepower, 325 foot pounds of torque. Now, if you'd gone back 10 years ago, people would have thought you were kidding because that's a serious amount of power in an off-roader. 
and I like my off-road vehicles as light and as simple as possible. And if I can reduce some of that weight and some of that complexity by going for a four-cylinder instead of a twin-turbo V6, I would make that sacrifice. Now, if this engine was like 150 horsepower, 180 pound-feet of torque, it'd be like, yeah, maybe it would make sense to upgrade. But 300, 325, it's still turbocharged, just one turbo instead of two, which means it'll still be good at elevation like where we live. So this actually, I think, is a cool choice. And one more thing about this engine, which I just learned thanks to a viewer sent me an email, this is built in the uh, L-I-M-A engine facility, and I always thought that it was pronounced Lima. It's in Ohio. It's actually Lima. There's your fun piece of trivia for the day. There are really two primary reasons that the Everglades is available in only the 2.3 over a standard Bronco, which you can get in the 2.7. Now, first of all, fuel economy, right? They wanted to save some MPGs and also extend the range for a vehicle meant to travel long distances, but also weight. This winch system is adding about 100 pounds to the front end of the vehicle, which is roughly as much as the 2.7 weighs more than the 2.3. So that extra 100 pounds you would get in the 2.7 is now being added by the winch. Now, certainly one of the most distinctive exterior features of the Everglades the wheel design. I freaking love these wheels. I think they are fantastic. Now, Kind of the current hot thing right now in the off-road world, steel wheels. These are actually an alloy wheel that kind of look like a steel wheel, but they are just so purposeful and fantastic. There's a company called 1552, which does a fairly similar wheel design, and I've always loved that look. And Ford has done that from the factory here um, in their own design, and it really, really looks very good. And one other thing I want to point out, actually, this vehicle has different fenders than a standard Bronco or even a Bronco Raptor. They're actually squared off at the top. So here we have a great comparison between the Everglades fender and a standard Bronco fender. So you can see the standard Bronco fender makes that gentle curve, whereas the Everglades is more vertical and then horizontal and then a little bit more vertical down there. And then it's got aluminum front fenders and then steel rear quarters, which is actually a different design as well compared to a standard Bronco because of course the quarter panel is in line with the fender flare. Kind of an interesting tidbit there. So those wheels are wrapped in a Goodyear Territory MT tire. This is a, a Sasquatch Bronco. What that means, it's got the big 35 inch tall tires, the suspension upgrades and the lockers. But these Goodyears are 31570 R17, so similar to what you'd find on other Sasquatch Broncos. Now the one kind of part of the exterior I'm not super hot on is this right here, this Everglade sticker. Now it's got kind of this cool topographical look and it's got Sasquatch written here, which is uh, pretty cool in these little like sighting blobs here. Um, I think maybe indicating that's where Sasquatch sightings were. And that's kind of a fun little Easter egg, but it's just a little big, a little heavy handed. And it would be cool if it kind of continued along the door, but it just is on this one panel on the front fenders. Um, and it, I don't know, it looks a little bit, a little half done. I'd like it to continue on the door, at least the rear fenders to create one cohesive appearance back. Now that theme of very purposeful design and functional execution continues on the inside of the Everglades. So this vehicle is what they call a marine grade vinyl seating surface. And it certainly does feel like a vinyl. There's no mistaking that this is a vinyl. It's not trying to be a leather, but it, it really is an incredibly durable material. And in a vehicle like this, where you want to go take it muddy, you really want to go get it dirty, this is a great material to clean. And then if you take a look at the floor, same thing. So it's got a complete vinyl floor, which I really love. I think all off-roaders should have that as an option. Now, apart from that, the interior is very well equipped, actually. We do have a leather wrapped steering wheel, which is a nice touch. We do have the big screen, dual zone automatic climate control, heated seats, that kind of thing. Um, and it is a comfortable and fairly luxurious place to spend time, but it isn't quite as nice as, uh, well, as some of the like fancier equipped Outer Banks Broncos. Now this color is exclusive to the Everglades currently, and it's just kind of flat tan. I love it. It's called Desert Sand. Great, great, great color. And one other thing about the Everglades as well, uh, current reservation holders are being prioritized to get their Everglades first. If you've been waiting for a Bronco for a long time, you can upgrade to an Everglades. So another feature you'll find on the Everglades, the integrated roof rack. So the roof still comes off, of course, these panels do still come out, um, although it would be a little bit trickier with this uh, roof bar design. But once again, continuing that purposeful, useful design, right? You could put a tent up there, perhaps, all your stuff. If there's one vehicle that looks about as close to an old school Land Rover series or Defender, the Bronco Everglades in a new vehicle is about as close as it gets. It actually looks in some ways more like an old Defender than the new Defender does. But once again, a nice cool touch. 
The Bronco Everglades is going on sale later this summer, starting at about $53,000. Now it does come equipped with all the Bronco off-road gear that you come to expect, like front and rear locking discs, a full complement of skid plates, turn assist, four-wheel drive high, four-wheel drive low. It does not, however, come with the sway bar disconnect, which is a little interesting. Now let me know in the comment section below what do you think of the Everglades. Is this more than just an appearance package? And we'll see you on the next video.